Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, man, who's excited? I wonder if my breath stinks. There's like nobody sitting up here. So Everybody's at the back of the church. They really took it. The first will be last and the last will be first. Awesome. I'm glad y'all are reading scripture. It's so good to see you tonight on Wednesday night. Um, we're excited to be here in the house of the Lord, so I hope you are as well. Uh, so we're, we're going to go ahead and start the um, service off right. Our youth are going to lead praise and worship. I'm excited to hear them once again. Um, things that are coming up, make sure I don't miss anything. This upcoming weekend is mom not, Mom's Night Out, uh, September the 7th. I think they're meeting at County Seat. Is that right? Dana's not here, so I don't need to look to you. 630. Um, uh, also, if the women are still having this upcoming Sunday. is another Bible study. Um, if you're in, it's going to be here at the church at 3.30? 3.30? 3. So if you're, any women and ladies are interested in that, um, church in the city come back in on September the 22nd. We're going to be at the, um, I don't think she's got a thing, but it's, I don't think I told her about that. But um, it's going to be at uh, Carolina Mattress in their parking lot right next to the cookout. Um, they said they'll let us use their power. Awesome. Uh, God is great. Um, we'll hopefully have a little bit more live music with sound and stuff like that. Um, trying to hit everything that's on the, th- on the list. Communion this upcoming Sunday at 6 as well. I don't want to miss that. Um, it's time that we set aside to um, show the Lord what he really means to us, uh, how he gave his life, his, his body, and his blood for us. Um, so make sure uh, make time for that and come Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Oh, a good deal. Senior Citizens Bingo. I know Rick said there. Y'all are excited about that. Uh, it's coming up on the 10th at 10.30 a.m. So y'all make plans. To, uh, do they need to still sign the paper or show who's coming? Or On the back table, if you're, if you're wanting to come, make sure you sign up so they can have a head count. I know they provide food and um, prizes and stuff like that. Hot dogs, I think they said they're having this, this time. I believe Miss Kim is going to um, make them for you guys. So that's awesome. Um, so I hope you all are excited. A lot of things coming up this um, month and more things coming up in October. So guys, y'all make sure you set your calendars. Our chicken plate sale is well still going on. Um, we need tickets sold. We need tickets sold. I need tickets sold. I'm looking to sell 12 it, and tickets sold as well. Um, I, I want to at least do 1,200. I think last year we got um, right at set nine. How many? 900. I want to do. I want to do 300 more this year. Um, so I need your help, guys. Um, Mr. James is laughing. He's like counting already in his head. Um, but it, we can do it. I know we can. Um, this is going to help money to go towards the youth and the children's ministry funds for the next year to help um, pay for things coming up with them. Um, so help us out with that, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Um, well, if y'all are going to stand, we'll pray. And I have the praise team to go ahead and get ready. Try not to be Rick and knock into the pole. Not the mic over. He put a big dent in it, but it's okay. It's a holy dent. Yeah, he don't drop mics. He kicks them over and stuff like that. So, guys, uh, pray with us. Everybody bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for all that you do and continue to do in our lives. We're just so grateful, Lord, to be in your house tonight, Lord God. We have so much to praise you for, Lord God. You brought us out of, uh, out of our sin in the darkness, Lord God, with your blood on the cross, Lord Jesus. And we want to say thank you for that, Lord God. We want to have the burning desire to reach people, Lord God, and to praise your name in every, every situation we can, not just here at church, well, Lord God, in our lives, in our jobs. Lord God, everywhere that we go, we should be able to, Lord God, to see the light, Lord God, and lead people to it as well. Lord God, and you give us that. And Lord God, and that's why we're here tonight, to praise your name, Lord Jesus. Be with us. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Lord Jesus, this could be, like I told my kids, the start of the revival, Lord God, to set this community, this city back on fire for Lord God. Lord Jesus, that's what we want people out of here, on fire for you, Lord God, discipling them, Lord Jesus, to lead others to Christ as well. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen and amen.
some ambient noise behind me. Makes me seem holier. There you go. Hold on, let me do it so y'all can see. No, I'm just kidding. All right, this is the time we're going to give back tonight, guys. God is so good. Uh, His Holy Spirit is here with us. Uh, it, it, this is the time that we're going to show God. It's kind of like our, 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 our um, being baptized. You know, it's outward things. Well, people can show, we can show, them. this is we're going to give it. We're going to pay our tithes. God, we're going to be obedient to you, what you say. Because, Lord God, when we do that outwardly expression, we, as our ushers come up, it, it, people pick up on it. People who may not think, and it, it, your kids see what you're doing. They, they mimic your parents. If you really want to know how somebody's parents are, or the, the adults, hang around their kids long enough. I mean, I don't sound ugly or mean. Mine are the same way. They're going to act like y'all. So that's why my kids are always good when they go off somewhere. I got one person to laugh. But this is a chance that we can show our kids, we can show others. So this is, we are going to be obedient to God. Because God's blessings are real. It's true. When we're obedient to Him, we step out on faith sometimes. And the kids can, I mean, talk to kids about your, your, your uh, 
paying tithes and stuff like that and, and how you have to cut corners sometimes to make sure, you know, we're going to be obedient to God before we do anything else in our house. Kids need to see that. So this is time we can do it. We can show them. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for all that you do and continue to do, Lord God, and that you look for your people to be obedient, just to follow you, Lord God. And, Lord God, that the love that, Lord, Lord Jesus, that you have for us, Lord God, that we should be able to, to do just the small things, Lord, as a tenth, Lord God. And, and sometimes, Lord, when we put it on the burden in our heart, the conviction that we do need to do an offering, Lord God, where, it's, where it takes a lot out of us, Lord God. But, Lord God, you'll pay us back tenfold, Lord God. You're the, you're the God with a, thou, a thousand cattle on the hill, Lord God, that you can pay us back. Lord God, you, you, we just have to have faith to see your work done, Lord God. It could be that, 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 that faith step away from a breakthrough in our lives, Lord God. And Lord God, I want you to uh, use this to build your kingdom, Lord God. Lord God, to, to put it in the hands of Jesus that they can use it, Lord God, in a way to, to show people your love and disciple them, Lord Jesus. Because this is going to go to missions, Lord Jesus. And we want to see people saved, Lord God, if not in, in, in a foreign country, Lord Jesus, here and locally. Let this go, Lord God, to touch hearts, to, to build a foundation upon your love, Lord Jesus. Because you're worthy of everything that you're going to receive here tonight, Lord Jesus. And we just praise your name. Amen and amen. with 
Aren't they awesome? Amen. Amen. Give them another, give them another round of applause. That's good. That's good. I'm excited about what our youth do for us here. They do such a great job for us. We're going to go ahead and look at Genesis chapter 11 tonight, if you all want to turn there. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump on in there and see, see what we can dig out here. Genesis chapter 11. Go ahead and let me see. I may just do half of it tonight, and I may do all of it. I don't know. We'll see how it gets going, and we'll go from there. It tells us in Genesis chapter 11, starting verse 1, it says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come. Let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be held withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech." So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. I'll go ahead and stop there for the time being. The Tower of Babel. You think about this, at this time there was only one language and, and one speech in the whole earth. Um, it, you didn't have a whole bunch of different languages, you had one. One language that was spoken, everybody could understand what everybody said. It's amazing to me how, how um, could you imagine a world in a place where everybody could understand one another. Actually, it, it sort of is like that today because if you go anywhere in the world, Western Europe, different places, almost everybody speaks English. Almost everybody. Matter of fact, when I was in Norway, and that's been quite a few, 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 few years ago, back in, uh, I guess it was probably 1987, maybe something like that. That's been a couple years ago, right? Anyways, people in Norway wanted to talk to you because they wanted to practice their English. Because everybody over there spoke English. I mean, it was just, you know, I'm sure probably in Germany it's the same way in different places in uh, Western Europe. Um, in Africa, believe it or not, when we went to Kenya, a lot of people speak English there. They teach it in the school to them. I mean, that's one of the languages they teach. Um, you have a lot of things. So, so it's starting to kind of sort of get back that way a little bit to where English is a, is a language of the world. Um, at this time, the whole world had one language and one speech. That was it. And, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Uh, now, God told them to go ahead and spread out and fill the world up and, and be fruitful and multiply and do all these things. But they journeyed from the east and they found a place that they really liked. So they decided, you know what, we're going to stay here. And that's just like people, right? That, that God may send you in a direction and, and you, you're going and you think it's pretty good. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go and do what God tells me. And you get comfortable. And you decide, ooh, man, I kind of like being right here. I, you know, I know God said to go there and go to do this and that, but it's really comfortable here. And I just assume go ahead and stay here. So I'm just going to go put roots down and just and stay right here. And they said to one another, they said, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar and they had all this. So they said, let's build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. And let's make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. They were in absolute disobedience to God's will. I want you to think about the world today. The world today is absolutely in disobedience to God's will for the most part. I mean, except for, the, for the, um, the remnant that's here, the majority are absolutely against God. Not only that, but they're also out to make a name for themselves. Okay? See, that was what they wanted to do. They wanted a reputation. A reputation as a people, a strong people, a place could build a, a big old city. And they could be a tower that was so tall that God could go ahead and send another flood and it wouldn't matter. That they couldn't be destroyed, that they couldn't be cast out again, they could not be scattered. That they were not going to do what God told them to do. They were going to do what they wanted to do, what they proposed. Because in their human power they could do that. 
Today I see that all the time in this world, that man wants to exalt himself above God, that he thinks of himself as powerful as God, that there's so many things that they, they've tried to e eliminate God from the equation. The craziest thing I've ever heard yet is evolution and things like that, to where they say that, that there was just some stuff in a mud hole and it got struck by lightning and all of a sudden you got human beings out of that somehow. I mean, it just blows my mind. I've never seen anything get more complicated down the line. If anything, the longer something's around, the more that it, that it decreases, that it decomposes, that it goes apart, that it does things, it never gets more complicated. If anything, it gets scattered and less complicated. But they want to take God out of the equation of life. So that way man can exalt himself. That he is the highest thing. That he's the highest creation. That he's it. That we don't need God anymore. And you see it all over this world. We've started in the United States. A lot of people, they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to talk about God. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't believe that he's done anything for them. That everything that they've done, they've done by the sweat of their own brow. And that they've worked hard and they've done that. But I'm here to tell them that without God, you can't do anything. Without God, you're, you, you don't have life itself. You, you are given every ability that you have from God. Whether you realize it or not, there was a time in my life where I thought I did everything from the sweat of my brow and that I worked hard and I deserved exactly what I got. And I'm not saying I didn't work hard because I did work hard, but who, the one who gave me the ability to work hard was God. Man, I want you to think about that for a second. You know, a lot of us when we're young, why we think we're young and strong and everything. But what happens when we slip a disc? You know, hey, man, anybody's got a back. Once you get 30, you get a back, okay? And when you get a back, well, then you find out how debilitating it can be when you all of a sudden you sneeze or you bend over or something happens, you know, or you pick something up wrong or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden you can't even tie your own shoes. I mean, grace of God that, that each one of us can do what we do. There's, I mean, God is there. He's the one that gives us the ability to do what we do. He's the one that does that. Now, see, man at this time, they wanted to exalt themselves against God to show that they, were, that they were greater than God, that they could do all those things. They wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to make a reputation that no one would come against them because they were so powerful and so strong. I mean, that's, that's man's will. That's always been man's desire. It will always be man's desire. It's idolatry in the sense that man worships himself. That's called humanism. Secular humanism. That's what runs this world today. Man thinks he's the highest, greatest thing there is. And everything revolves around man. And that's it. And, that, that, and that's, that's, that's what the whole world runs on now is the secular humanism. They've absolutely lost their mind in so many ways and situations. When I sit and I listen to them on TV and I listen to them in the news and I listen to these different things and I read the papers and all this, there is this mindset that has permeated this world. To where they've, they've completely slid out God, they've slid out morality, anybody can live any way you want to, right? We don't have no rules. Look, marriage, oh, we can marry anything you want to nowadays, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Just because God said it's between a man and a woman, that doesn't, it, we do anything we want to. That's old-fashioned, we don't believe that anymore. We don't believe any of that stuff in the Bible anymore. That's just old fables and wives' tales and all these things. But I'm here to tell you that the power of God, there's going to come a reckoning day, folks. I mean, there's going to come a day. There's going to come a day. When all of a sudden people are going to realize every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I remember when I was in boot camp. There's a boot camp story for you, okay? We got to boot camp. First 10 days at Paris Island called forming. Um, they didn't do anything to you then. I thought, well, this really isn't that bad. We didn't do any push-ups, weren't run, they didn't do anything to you. I mean, they still yelled at you a little bit, you know, but it wasn't, wasn't a, a proper yelling like I got later. So we thought, oh, well, this is really not that bad, you know. The drill instructor, why he'd, uh, they gave us all laundry numbers. Every one of us had a number. Mine was 26. I will never forget that number. A lot of numbers I may forget in this world. I can't tell you my first phone number or anything else, but I can remember number 26, that was on my laundry and on the end of my bunk, and there was a little set of footprints at the end of my rack that had 26 in between them. That was my number. Praise God, I was 26. <laughs> well, you know, so we're, we're going along. We think, oh, this is not that bad. They have not done anything. And the drill instructor kept saying, you know, ladies, they'd call us ladies. You know, they were real nice to us. Ladies, ladies, payday's coming. And we're like, what's he talking about? Of course payday's coming. We get paid on the 15th and 30th. We're government employees, man. Yeah, payday. That's right. Payday's going to come. Hallelujah. 
And they keep telling you payday is coming. Every time you mess up, they say, what's your laundry number? 26. Why don't you write it down? He had a little, matter of fact, James, he had one of the little books like you got right there. <laughs> he flipped that thing open and he write that number down. And every time somebody messed up, he wrote a number down. 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 Well, at the end of those 10 days, while well, we got introduced to our drill instructors, our actual drill instructors that we got, and we were handed over to them. And once we were handed over to them, the whole world, heaven, and earth was shook. I'm just here to tell you, they started going absolutely crazy. These men lost their ever-loving mind. I've never seen anything like it. I've never been yelled at like that before in my life and have not since. And they whipped out that book, and they started calling out laundry numbers, and they put you up there on that quarter deck, and they have you doing push-ups and jumping jacks and side straddle hops and up and down and left and right. And I watched grown men cry for their mama. Mama, what did I do? Mama, mama, mama. I mean... And y'all, y'all can sit here and laugh. I'm here to tell you. Jimmy, you can tell them about that, can't you, brother? You've seen grown men cry, haven't you? <laughs> they, they got away. They got away with words. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. <laughs> but they told us, they said, payday's coming. Well, payday came. And they started reading off all the laundry numbers. And every time we messed up, every time we did, they sent us up to that quarter deck, and they thrashed us up there, and they had us doing, I mean, there was just puddles of sweat everywhere. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. But payday came we had all done things wrong payday came i'm here to tell you folks there's a payday coming the lord jesus christ he's going to return but when he returns this next time he's not going to be a little baby in a manger he's going to be the king hallelujah he's going to have a sword dipped in the blood amen he's going to be the righteous king he's, he's not coming back as a little baby he's coming back as a conquering king he's coming back and then it's going to be a payday and i'm here to tell you that that's going to come so you got to understand that that the world right now they think they've got it going on they think that it's all going to be good but just like it was when noah entered that ark and god closed the door and judgment was on those that were not inside that ark there's going to come a day of judgment like never seen before on this earth it's coming it's coming. Payday's coming. So they built themselves a city and a tower whose tops in the heavens. They built all the way up. I don't think that they thought that they could, could actually get to heaven, but I think they just built it up so high that they thought that, you know, that they could, they could be exalted in such a way that they could, they could get close to it anyways, that they just wanted to show God how powerful they were and what they could do. But verse 5 said, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. I, I don't think that God technically came down, okay? I mean, that's, you know, that's one of those uh, expressions that we talk about God. But I'm here to tell you that obviously God would have had to come down to see what they were doing because man can't do anything to even touch what God can do. Hallelujah. The heavens are higher than anything. God's thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. His ways are higher than ours. So if God's going to approach us, he's going to have to come down. So the Lord came down to see what they had done. He come to see what they had built. And I know they were so proud of what they did. I bet they just thought they had the greatest thing, greatest building they'd ever built. The Lord said, indeed, the people are one. They have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. I mean, they were together. They were all working together. I can imagine the, 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 the thousands of men that were working on this tower, this ziggurat that they used to call them or whatever over there, seven layers high, big, huge tower on, on the plain of Shiner. I'm sure it could have been seen for miles and miles that people could look and see what man, look what man did. Look at that big tower that man built. Well, God had him. He had him. He said, come, let us go down there. And confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. I'm going to tell you, you want to mess somebody up, get it where they can't talk to each other. And understand one another. And see how well they can work together. Y'all ever notice in, in directions nowadays that when you got directions that they're written in a whole bunch of different languages? I mean, you got French in there usually and you got Spanish and you got English and you got a you got to flip to the right page to be able to read to know how to do the directions. And, you know, and to be quite honest, I'm going to go one step further. And sometimes the, the Chinese fella that wrote the directions, English was like his second language. So it doesn't even really make sense in the English that's written there. 
You know, I heard one guy speaking one time that he said that, that he was reading directions. And, and, and as he read the directions, why, he noticed that, that it said to go ahead and tighten the bolts until they were happy. <laughs> until they were happy. I guess in Chinese, why, you know, you can have happy bolts or whatever. But, but you know, <laughs> in English, that sounds really funny. I mean, you have happy bolts. Oh, we got happy bolts. Just tighten them till they're happy. But, see, that's the thing about, about different languages. And when we translate and we do different things that, that you don't understand one another, it makes no sense sometimes. God confused their languages. They, he absolutely confused. I want you to think about how many languages there are in the world today. And I don't even know for sure how many thousands of languages that are spoken how would we ever get to that point? Thousands of languages. I read something in a book the other day that said that, you know, you could take a gorilla from anywhere in the world and that the gorillas could understand one another. Now, I don't know who speaks gorilla that could find out or not, but, but they tell me, scientifically speaking, that all gorillas speak the same gorilla language. Well, how is it that all the gorillas speak the same language, but all the people speak different languages? I mean, there's more languages you can shake a stick at in this world. They're trying to translate the Bible into all of them, and I don't even know how many they've translated it into, but it's, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of languages that, that they've translated the Bible into for different people in different places. The Lord confused their languages. You wonder why we speak so many different languages? Because God confused their language. They might not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there all over the face of the earth. And they ceased building because obviously they couldn't talk to each other anymore. They couldn't do. Can you imagine the commotion? Can you imagine what happened when all of a sudden no one could talk to each other? They didn't understand what one another were saying. That had to be absolutely just crazy. Therefore, its name is called Babel because the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Now, I want you to understand something. The confusion came out of the midst of all of that. But there was another day, the day of Pentecost, where God reversed that. Remember Pentecost? It's a really neat thing. You know, the Holy Spirit given to the church. And you had all the Jews that were, because the Jews had been scattered all over the known world. You realize that, right? That they had been, had been scattered all over the place. They were from all over the world. But every year they would come back. They would come back. For the religious holidays. So there they are at Pentecost. All these Jews from all around the world. That all spoke different languages. And the Holy Spirit fell. On those folks in that upper room. And they started speaking. In languages. To where all these people. Understood in their own language. The mighty works of God. What do you think about that for a second? Now, it had to have been one crazy scene, too. I mean, to where all of a sudden you're hearing these guys that are, are Galatians, because evidently they could tell by their accent or whatever where they were from, and, and they were speaking all these languages, and everyone was hearing the gospel in their own language. All of a sudden, the whole world had been brought back together through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, that's the, that's the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That's the power of God. God brings things back together in unity in Jesus Christ. See, so many times we, we, we fight and fight. We fight for unity. It sounds crazy. But we literally fight and battle to be united in man when the only way that we'll ever be united is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the only way that anybody will ever lay it down. That's the only way why anybody could ever agree with one another. We can fight over all kinds of things, but the one thing that we won't fight over is Jesus. If we can get united in Him, and at Pentecost, the whole world got to hear the gospel in their own language, all the known world. They got to hear that. And some people obviously were scoffers and mocking and said, oh, they must be drunk. But that makes no sense to me that, that a drunk would speak a language that he never heard before. That makes no sense. I mean, when you start listening and hearing the things that they said, it, it doesn't make any sense to me, the excuses. But that's just the devil making excuses about what God had done. And God was reuniting the whole world at Pentecost through the power of the Holy Spirit. How much do we need the Spirit of God today in this country? I mean... The United States, if there's any place that needs the Spirit of God living and dwelling in the people, it's here. 
We are so divided, it's not even funny. We can't agree on anything. Nothing. Nobody can agree on anything. They fight over everything, this and that and the other. And the reason why there's so much conflict and so much fight is because every man wants to have it and every woman wants to have it their way. Right? They took the, they took the absolute Burger King slogan to mind. You know what Burger King used to say? Have it your way. And now what they used to say, you all remember them commercials where they had them funky little Burger King hats on and, you know, the three colors and all that stuff? Have it your way. Have it your way. And that's what everybody wants. They want it. I want it my way. 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 There's no unity that way, though, because everybody's fighting for what they want. God has a plan. He's got a purpose for mankind. And it's through Jesus Christ and through his spirit. That's the only way that we'll ever be united. You want to unite this country? Get the people of this country saved. Get them to where they know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And you'll see a difference and a change in this country. You'll never unite them under the Republican Party. You'll never unite them under the Democratic Party. You'll never unite them under the Independent Party. Man, you can make up all the parties you want. I don't care which one you pull out. The Green Party, this party, that party. We'll never be united except in Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the only way that there'll ever be unity in this country is through Jesus. And see, we need to go ahead and take up that torch again and start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and watching people's lives be changed and taking it to the streets and taking it to those that need it. That's what needs to happen. But it will never happen if we don't see a revival in this country. It'll never happen because I'm here to tell you, United States, if there's not a revival, there's going to be a mighty fall. I mean a mighty, mighty fall. And we may already have gone too far. I don't know. You know, sometimes like when you're flying an airplane and, and, and it starts diving. And, you know, there comes a point in time where, where no matter how hard you pull back on the stick of that plane, it's going to hit the ground. Well, I don't know where we're at in the dive, but I know the plane's going down. I know it's going. Everybody, you know, they sing happy, happy, happy. But I'm here to tell you, man, this country's in a mess. Our, our dollar, you know what props, <laughs> let's talk about this for a second. Y'all like this. How about a little economics tonight? You like economics? Anybody like economics? I like economics. Economics is good. You know, when we first started out with, with stuff, when we traded for things, you gave somebody something that was worth something, and they gave you something back, right? That's called barter. Right, If I have some oats or some grain or whatever, and, and Wendy's got a nice pot, and I say, well, look, I got a pound of uh, you know, corn. You give me your pot, I give you the corn. Right, We do all this stuff. We trade back and forth. We have all this fun. Right. Well, then we started deciding, well, well instead of having to carry around um, different things, well, let's, let's, make, let's get some kind of form of medium that's worth something. So they got things like gold, and they got things like silver, and things like that that were precious metals that were actually worth something. So they would, they would have that, that, and so you had to have your, your sack of gold with you, okay, to go get something, right? Well, then, well, the thing about toting all that gold around, why, you know, that could get kind of heavy. I don't know how many of y'all tote gold today. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> but, so then you decide, well, you know, it'd be a lot easier to, to have something that, that represented that gold, so what we'll do is we'll stack all the gold up someplace, and we could call that place a bank or something, and we'll get paper money or notes or coins or whatever you want, a currency of some form that's backed up by that gold. And, you know, in the United States, even up into the, the 1900s, you know our money was still backed by silver and gold. We had a gold standard. We had a whole bunch of places, a place called Fort Knox. You all heard of that place? They used to have a whole bunch of gold there. I don't know if they still do or not. They might not have any there. I don't know. But that's what used to back up our money. And you, if you looked on the old um, dollar bills or, or different bills, there was, um, I was trying to think which bill it was. Was the silver standard or whatever that it said right on it? People have some nowadays. I mean, they keep them because they're a keepsake or whatever. But, but if you took that, that dollar, they would give you X amount of silver in exchange for that dollar because that's what it was worth, okay? Well, that's a pretty good system. I mean, because there's something backing up your money. Back in the early 70s, we abandoned the gold standard. You know why our money's worth stuff now? Because our government says it is. 
Nothing's holding it up. And you know, it would be really, you could be like, oh my gosh, well, you know, maybe we need to do what the other countries are doing. Well, guess what the other countries are doing? Same thing we are. Ain't nothing backing their money up either. Ain't nothing backing up none of the money. Do you understand there's going to come a day? And see, if you read Revelation when it talks about that, that you know, nothing's going to be worth anything. You can work all day long and not make anything. And, and, and you know, no matter what, there's, it's not going to be any value to anything. That's because that's what's going to happen to our monetary system here one of these days. It's all going to crash. Because if somebody finally decides, you know what, I actually want something of value for that dollar. I want, I want, I want the, the note paid. I want the note due. And we're not even going to go ahead and get into the, the debt and the deficit and all this other stuff that's going on right now. Because actually China probably owns this place, the whole country. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know who owns what anymore because you got to dig back a few layers. You can find out. There's nothing holding it up. There's going to come a mighty crash. I'm not telling you a lie. If you actually research this stuff, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. There is no gold standard anymore. There's nothing. The only reason that money's worth anything is because the government says money's worth something. And that's it. And see what they did after, remember the 2007, 8 in there, in that time there, when, when the housing market, the bubble burst, and everything went all to pieces? See, I remember what happened then, because I was working in construction at that time. And the price for hanging sheetrock went from $22 a board to hang and finish to $15 a board to hang and finish. It dropped by $7 a board that fast. Everything started going. And instead of fixing things back then, you know how we fixed the economy? Not just ours, all around the world. We printed more money. If you print more money, you put more money in circulation. You prop it up. Folks, I'm telling you, There's going to come a mighty fall one of these days. And I'm not, you know, advertising for anything, but I'm just telling you that things are not as they appear to be. It looks really good right now. The economy looks great. Everything looks good. I'll just be praying that the bubble doesn't burst. There's only one thing that we can trust in in this world. Because, see, a lot of people trust in their finances. They believe, you know, they have a retirement or they have money set aside and they feel like it's going to be safe and there's nothing going to happen. Although, a lot of times that's dependent upon the stock market. And right now, the stock market's sky high, but there's days where, you know, it loses 1,000 points in a day and 2,000 points in a day and it's up and down and left and right. And, but we always assume that it's going to go higher and higher and higher. But we put our trust in those things we believe that if we could just work hard enough or we do the right things or whatever we do that that we're going to make sure that we're everything's going to be okay if we cover all the bases and do all those things but i'm here to tell you that there's a whole world out there that doesn't care whether you make it or not but there is one that we can trust and his name's jesus I'm here to tell you. And that's all, that's all you got, folks. That's all you got. That's all I got. That's all our kids have, our grandkids, all of them. That's all they've got is Jesus. Because see, sooner or later, I'll remember, all this is going to. So as we close tonight, if you all would stand with me. We got to ask ourselves. Where have you put your trust? What do you trust? What do you trust? Man's done some great things. We've done some mighty things, man. We've built huge buildings, skyscrapers. This country is absolutely fabulous, man. We've got paved streets everywhere, interstates, man. We've got the internet. Y'all remember the days before the internet? See, I can't even hardly remember what it was like not to have an internet. 
or not to have cell phones or not to have all these. See, we just, we just keep going and going and going and going. Knowledge will increase and people run to and fro and all this stuff. I mean, bi- biblical things that are going on. I mean, it's all, it's all going and it's going and it's going and it's going. It's going. But it's going to come a day. It's going to come a day when it's all going to stop. What do you trust? Who's your trust in tonight? Do you trust Jesus? Is he your Lord and Savior tonight? Is that the one that you're like, you know what? The whole world can turn upside down, whatever it is. It doesn't matter because as long as I got Jesus, I know I'm going to be okay. Is that you tonight? Is that you tonight? Man, you're trusting in Jesus Because I'm here to tell you that there's a reason why I preach the gospel. And the reason I preach the gospel is to get people to trust Jesus Christ. To get them to get their eyes off of this world and off of this. This is all temporary. Every bit of this is all temporary. There's only one place that's eternal, and that's called heaven. And that's where we're all hopefully going to go someday. Praise God, if we know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we're going to get there. But That's our hope. That's our faith. That's our trust. How serious do you take it? How serious is it? I know we can get really serious here inside the church, but how serious is it to to you when you walk outside these four walls? When you live your life, how serious? Somebody looked on your life, would they see that Jesus Christ was a serious thing in your life? Or was it just a passing thing? Or something that doesn't really seem to make any difference at all? Where, Where is he at in your life? So as we pray tonight, First of all, we need to pray for for our country. We need to pray for our church. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for those that don't know Jesus. And we need to pray that we will stay strong in the midst of all this. That we'll walk by faith and not by sight. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord, thanking you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love. God, you're so good to us. Lord, we thank you for that tonight. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to worry about what's going to happen in the world because you have us. You've got us, Lord Jesus, that we have placed our trust in you, our confidence in you. We walk by faith and not by sight. We believe that you are the Savior, that you are the one that went to prepare a place for us. You're the one that's going to come back. You're the one that's going to rule for a thousand years. You're the one. And God, we thank you for that tonight. So, Lord, we thank you for the hope that you give us to live out each and every day, God. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. And, God, I pray that you build our faith. Lord, that we be a people that trust you above all things. Lord, that no matter what we see or what's going on around us, that we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That we've we've staken our, our lives in you. We've staken our claim in you. That we believe in you. That we've placed ourselves under your blood. That you've cleansed us from all sin and all unrighteousness. That we walk in you. That we have eternal life through you. And that we thank you for that tonight. So, Father, I pray that you would build our faith. That you would keep us. And Lord, we're going to thank you for everything. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.